Welcome to Proceed to Tile's ultimate guide to picking out tile for your home. Hi, I'm Anna, and I'm here to give you the ultimate guide of why certain applications of tile should be used in certain areas, certain rooms, and all aspects of your home. There are so many options out there, and I just wanna make sure that we choose the right thing that fits you and your space and is gonna last you a lifetime. So we're gonna talk about four different types of tile today. You have glass, marble, porcelain, and ceramic. Each one can be used in a different way in your home. And we just wanna make sure that when you're using these products, that we're using them the right way. Last you a long, long time. There's not a possibility of anyone slipping, falling, and there's just all around aspects of this being the perfect tile for the space that you're using it in. So we're gonna to touch on glass. Glass is absolutely gorgeous. It's super, super pretty. But again, maybe not the most durable out of all the tile. There are certain applications where a lot of these vendors are coming out with a recycled composite type of glass where yes, in certain applications, they say you can use it as light residential, which means you can kind of use it as a shower floor a lot of the times, but I really wouldn't suggest that in a major space like your bathroom or any walkways or something that you're stepping on constantly, which is technically high traffic, we probably want to avoid doing that. I know a lot of people love to do the glass in their shower. It's absolutely beautiful, but I have heard that sometimes down the line, somebody elbows it or something happens and someone accidentally hits the glass and it breaks. It's a gorgeous thing. And as long as you're willing to take that risk, do it. But there is certain aspects of that where obviously glass, like if you were to have a mirror or your windshield, it can crack upon pressure. So we just wanna make sure that when we're using that application, it's great for a backsplash, it's great on a wall application. We probably really do wanna avoid putting that on our floors. That's definitely key. The most durable I find is the porcelain. The porcelain these days is such a high body clay that is made to last. So when porcelain is put down, it's made for floors, it's made for walls, it's made for high traffic. There are ratings of porcelain. Commercial spaces typically want to see a PEI of four or five. A lot of the fives mean that it can be used indoor or outdoor. But again, you do want to go over those specs. All the factories release all of that information. Most of it is on the website. We'll have all that information for you. But again, porcelain has so much variety. It has marble looks. It has concrete looks, stone looks. It has pretty much everything you could imagine at this point. The way these factories, especially Italy and Spain, produce the porcelain with that 3D inkjet printing, it looks like natural stone. It's incredible what they're producing out there. And if you're gonna go for something that you wanna use in high traffic areas, whether it's your whole floor of your house, they have beautiful wood looks. Who needs to do real wood anymore? If you do porcelain, it looks just the same and it's gonna last you forever. It's waterproof, it's flood proof pretty much, because once you cement that stuff in and you grout it, if you have a flood, you just suck it up. That's the whole thing with the LVT it kind of beats that out. And then obviously in your bathrooms, it's floor and wall covering. So you could put that anywhere you want. Shower floor, floor, walls. You could put it as a master focal wall. You could put it as a backsplash. You could put it as your kitchen floor. A lot of the porcelain tiles are made to go outside now. They have outdoor tiles that look just like blue stone or natural stone. It's incredible. You put them around your pool. They have pavers. Porcelain is all around becoming a huge huge, huge element. And we're just going to expand on that. Everybody who knows the original ceramic, we used to put it on our walls and our floors and we used to put it everywhere. The thing is about the ceramic these days, it's typically not really made as much for a floor application. It's made for very light residential floors. I still, once I see that, usually recommend to steer away from that type of product. The ceramic tiles, like you're seeing all behind me, all of these are ceramic. So these typically are for wall application. You wanna use them for a wall, the clay, the body and everything, you can feel the difference. The weight of a ceramic versus the weight of a porcelain, probably double the weight in a porcelain because you can see that durability on it. The clay, very soft. So the only problem is, is that if you put that on a floor, you're risking a lot of cracking there. And they typically will say wall application only. Most of these boards, most of these products, we should know. We're gonna advise you as to what to use out of the space because we wanna make sure that you're not running into an issue in the long term. But ceramic, they have those beautiful hand molded like zelliage tiles in the ceramic now. You have your four by fours, your classic subway styles, certain applications of penny tile, uh, mosaics like Erebus. 
they can either be ceramic or porcelain. You just wanna make sure you, you get the knowledge on it before you use it in a certain area. Cause we really do highly recommend in most of these times, especially a bathroom, bathroom floor, or even main floors, that we usually use a porcelain and we're sticking to the ceramic just being on your wall. So the other one that I, I love to use is natural stone. There is so much controversy over using natural stone. It's gorgeous. And a lot of the times people are so worried because yes, it's natural stone, which means it's porous. It's a little bit softer depending on which tile you choose, which marble you choose. Most popular these days is the Carrera, Bianco Carrera. You have your beautiful Eastern white, Arab Escado, your Calicutta gold, a beautiful stone with the white and the gold running through it. Everybody gets very, very nervous about using marble, but I will say whole cities were built out of marble. If you go out of this country, you're gonna see these beautiful pillars and all these buildings made out of natural stone. The granite, we find that a lot of our customers are going back to that natural granite or quartzite, which is again, a natural stone, even the marble. And now I know a lot of people will say, do I have to seal it every six months to a year? No, there are sealers out these days. One that we carry is Dry Tech probably number one on the market with that sealer, it's gonna seal that marble for around 15 years. Application should always be done before grouting. We always put on paperwork seal before, and I always recommend after grouting, because what's gonna hurt to seal the marble over and then seal the grout? You're gonna get that beautiful, timeless look that although porcelain has come a long way, that natural stone, that movement, the variation, those beautiful color tones that you see in natural stone, it's not able to be completely replicated yet. Those mosaics that you're gonna see, those beautiful water jets that we have all in our showroom, they're natural stone. I don't shy away from using them unless it's mother of pearl in certain applications like water. If you're a really high bleach user, I tell people if you can't stay away from that, maybe not the best idea for you. If you're a natural cleaner, Dawn soap, warm water, all the dirt, grime, everything off, and it's not abrasive, even on the porcelain, but it's so great on the marble. It's all preference of what the customer is willing to do, and a lot of the times the installers, it may be a little bit more expensive, but to be honest, some of the porcelain mosaics are just as expensive as the marble, and if you seal it, you're pretty much good to go, and just stay away from any of those cleaners because the bleach, Tilex, anything with those harsh chemicals, those typically not only destroy the stone, but they even destroy the grout. So that's something to keep in mind as well. In certain applications of certain spaces, let's say your kitchen, a lot of the times people maybe use wood floors, but sometimes they want porcelain. So depending on how busy the countertop is or natural stone or whatever they're using, we usually suggest you know a nice porcelain for the floor. I have a lot of customers that just already have natural wood floors and they refinish that. And then for the backsplash, Backsplash is endless. You can use glass, you can use porcelain if you want, you can use ceramic, and you can use natural stone. There is thousands and thousands of options for you to choose. Again, if you choose to do marble behind your backsplash, you just seal it, and it's totally fine. These sealers are made to last. They're there for 15 years. If you do porcelain, heck, put it up there. It's totally fine. There are certain grades, certain products. Look on the back. Again, also consult someone. They also have heat resistance and things like that. Most of the time, the products will tell you, considering it, it would be applied above a stove, there's so much coming off of that stove range. You just wanna make sure that what you are applying is safe for that area. Your kitchen and your bathrooms are pretty much key in your home. So obviously the products that you're using in those matter. Your kitchen is a high traffic area and your bathroom is something that you use every single day. You may have multiple family members using that bathroom. So it's taking on a lot of wear and tear. So typically in the bathroom spaces, we just wanna be mindful of what we're using and where we're using it. A lot of contractors have a preference on what they feel you should install. Certain types of spaces will have different types of applications. When you have a smaller space, I usually suggest, hey, let's maybe use a bigger format tile so it's not so busy, so it helps maximize that space. A lot of the times, if you have like a five by seven, five by eight, five by nine, it's a Long Island special. That's what they give us, a shoebox of a bathroom unfortunately. And we all have hard water. I hear it every day. The pink, the grime, I have it in the toilet. We have it all over. It gets in the grout. The one thing that typically helps prevent and keep that off is usually vinegar and a little bit, of, again, the Dawn soap. I, I really abide by that. It's, it's the best thing ever. But the porcelain, it's not going to hurt anything in there. So the porcelain, 
we use all the time. They have those beautiful large formats. They're 24 by 48, two by four. You stack two of those, you're at the ceiling. You do them horizontally, you stack four and you're at the ceiling. Clean lines also helps visually make the appearance of the bathroom feel a lot larger. Hey, we use marble mosaics on the floor. A lot of our applications in the showroom, we have actual natural stone on the floor. The river rocks, a lot of people are like, oh no, the river rocks because of the grime and the dirt. Again, if they're sealed, I put them on the commercial floor to show that they will take the wear and tear as long as they are properly sealed and cleaned the right way. These products should last you a very long time. Obviously porcelain is the best. If you want to do your shower in glass, I really highly suggest that you don't have a big family that's using that space all the time. It's beautiful, but again, the durability factor, it could crack, it could chip, and you're not gonna wanna have to deal with replacing a piece or two. It's a nightmare. I really usually suggest to stay away from it. I don't mind doing it when it's behind a niche, it's tucked back, it's recessed, it's typically very beautiful. A lot of the times people will use the border, but I'm talking about those three by six subways or three by 12 glass, specifically in that type of area. We're bumping around, we're always moving, things are dinging and it's just a little bit risky to use that. But marble, again, I find marble completely fine. Again, everyone says not to use it. I think it's beautiful. I think it's fine because it is okay. Again, things have been built in marble forever. The bathroom is pretty much limitless when it comes to tile. But if you want the stuff that's gonna last in the long term, usually it's porcelain. When it comes down to when you go shopping for tile, you probably always wanna to go to someone who's a specialist in the field. Here at Proceda Tile, we are trained interior designers. We do have our degrees. We have both been in the industry for nine plus years. And we genuinely have so much product knowledge and so much information that we're always making sure that the client gets what they need. Although there's a lot of products out there, we typically wanna make sure that the client who comes in, whoever you are, we wanna fit a space and tailor it to you. There's so many products out there. We're always gonna let you know what you can use and where you can use it. We're gonna help you design those spaces with a color palette. You come in, you say, I want gray and white. You're not really sure what you want, but we're gonna let you pull out a couple things we're gonna help you put it all together. We're gonna to give you a visual representation, pulling out all the samples of a wall, a coordinating floor, shower floor, if you have something that goes with all the color tones that you're looking for. And at the end of the day, if you need us to help pick out your paint, you want us to help give you an idea of fixtures, we do all of that for you. We're always gonna make sure that this process becomes the easiest thing and you don't have anything to worry about. We'll send you home with any samples you need. If you need to see it in your lighting, if you need to see it in your space, we don't charge for samples. We let you take them home. We want you to visualize exactly what we're envisioning for you. And we just want you to love it at the end of the day so you can just be super happy and love your space for the next 20 years.